What's up? This is Jeff from Devil Driver. You're listening to Rock On Radio. Turn this up. Gino. This. How are you, brother? How are you, brother? How is everything there? I'm okay, man. My family is doing well. How about you, brother? I'm okay. My family is, is okay, too. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yes, I'm, I'm here in Canada right now, in Kingston, cold, missing the sun. <laughs> <laughs> winter, 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 winter is coming. Just enjoy it for what it is, brother. Like, light that fireplace and cuddle up, you know? <laughs> I know. <laughs> we miss you here in Canada. Since the last year, we I saw know. you in Toronto. Yeah, I miss touring, man. I miss touring, brother. I miss, uh... I miss everything that is about normal life. So let's see what happens. Um, a mentor of mine said, uh, listen, you, do you ever walk into the movie theater? Mm -hmm. Try to script the ending. Okay. It's like, no, I never try to, I never walk into a movie theater, try to script the end. I always watch the movie. He goes, that's where we're at. Watch <laughs> the movie play itself out. There's no way to script this ending. So we'll see where we're going. Oh, yeah. Well, let me tell you, your album, Dealing with Demons One, is awesome good work thank you so much there's been a lot of accolades coming our way uh we just got the notification yesterday that we're number one mm -hmm. uh, on all the on all, on all the radio charts which is incredible wow uh, we came out number four on the hard rock charts so it was uh, wow cory taylor queen yes cory taylor queen deftones devil driver it's amazing. and i was like you know which one doesn't fit <laughs> and it's You know, Devil Driver for sure. I, I, you know, crossing over into that hard rock chart is a, is a huge deal for us. You know, we're an mm -hmm. underground working class band that puts in, you know, I play more shows in two years than most bands will play in their lifetime. And people are really taking to this record. Uh, it's getting nine out of 10 reviews and it's 10 out of 10s. It's unbelievable fantastic. to see what's happening. So, so thank you very much. I appreciate it. That's fantastic. You're very welcome. How was that? creative process of this dealing with demons one the first thing i do because i realize a long time brand a long time band that's been around 10 20 years there's mm -hmm. a lot of bands that have been around a long time and when they release new material it sounds like all the old material so the first thing that i said to the band was right i'm going to give you the keys to unlock all the chains and locks that you have okay do not think about the brand don't think about the brand don't think about the fans Don't look past to the back records. Uh -huh. I want you to, if we just met tonight in a bar, mm -hmm. and I said, hey, let's start a band, what kind of music would we make? And I think that freed the guys up to use all of their influences and start delivering me what I think are songs of a lifetime. And now we're on a whole different train. It also unlocked me to use all the influences that I have as well, which you know I come from a punk rock, goth background. And it led, and we definitely are a dark band, Devil Driver, and allowed me to use those influences. So I think we're on to something here uh, as a band, and I think people are really starting to hear it. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Is there any difference between this new record and the previous ones? Well, Devil Driver has a signature sound, but all the records are definitely different. I mean, our second record doesn't sound like our third. Uh, our newest records don't sound like the older material. Mm -hmm, okay. Obviously, you can tell it's double. You can obviously tell it's double driver because you know it's us. But there's a there's something definitely happening. Something very organic, a change happening within our music, and you can't really fit us into anything. You know that, man. I mean, we're not death metal. We're not black metal. We're I not know. trash. Like this is why the fan base has started to to tag things like groove metal. And as soon as other bands started using groove metal, our fans started to tag dark groove mm -hmm. because we we have we have this darkness in us, but then we are a groove band. So I'm very proud of that as well. That we stand alone. Uh, we don't really fit in. I've never really fit in in my life anywhere, to be honest with you. And so this is a good thing for art. This is a good thing for music, is that we stand alone. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, you did a, a great job with the song wishing because i love your clean voice in that song it, it was something uh different if you listen to the other songs and you did a like you repeat you did a great job in that song i love that song for me it's one of the thank best you songs. man i 
Thank you so much, brother. I so appreciate it. I mean, here, here's the thing. Okay. By freeing the band and letting them do what they want and using all of their influences, I had to do the same. So let me tell you about Wishing. Okay. It happened very organically. So I'm in the studio. I'm laying this thing heavy and low. I'm laying it screamy. I'm laying it punk rock. Of course, the chorus was, was it's heavy. Okay. I've already, I already had done the chorus, and I had to get to the verses. Okay. And uh, the, the producer said, look, you're not doing what you should do with this. You know what you should do with this. And I said, okay, let's take a break. Now, I come from punk rock. I come from goth. Those mm -hmm. are my background. I only found heavy metal because I found Motorhead. I thought they were actually a punk band until mm -hmm. I saw a picture of them. So with Wishing, he, we took a break, and I came in, and I laid the verses very Bauhaus, very Sisters of Mercy, mm -hmm. very gothic. And uh, he put his hands up. It was the first time he put his hands up in the studio. I was like, oh, my God, whatever you're doing, like, keep going. And he let the song roll. And from there, it was, like, apparent to me that clean vocals were needed. Now, I made a statement on a DVD in mm -hmm. 2002 that Devil Driver released that there would never be clean vocals in Devil Driver because, of course, in Cold Chamber, I sang a lot clean, mm -hmm. and I didn't think that the Devil Driver brand uh, band needed uh, clean vocals. Now, the reason for that, let me paint this picture. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is because I, I see a lot of bands skew their art and do that clean vocal thing on choruses most of the time to get to radio to develop their brand bigger and earn money. And I didn't want to be part of that almost sellout behavior. So I went in, I laid that song, Very Goth, uh, and I didn't even think that song would make the record, to be honest with you. And the band, mm -hmm. the management, everybody is like, okay, this is, this is an amazing song. And I said, well, listen, we're not going to run with this as a, as a beginning track. I mean, it's the fifth track we put out. Mm -hmm. I literally put it out just so people can hear something different and then go buy the record. And now all of a sudden, it's number one on the charts everywhere. Uh, it's unbelievable how, how it happened very organically, you know. Um, and I'm proud of that, you know. Um, there's, there's a group of heavy metal bands out there that I don't listen to that are not volatile, not visceral, not violent. It's just, and they tend to use the clean vocal thing as a way to get to radio and I didn't want to I didn't want to be one of those bands but this is, is crazy uh, my producer said to me Des you do not have to worry about this like the chorus is so heavy on this song I'm going to tell you honestly I don't think radio will ever play this song and I said okay great then put it on the record mm -hmm. now look what's happening I mean it's crazy to see what's happening and um, I'm very proud I'm very appreciative I'm tremendously humbled. I've got a very long career. Uh, and this is a long time coming to reach this number one spot. And then to be number four on the rock charts, right below the Deftones, I mean, it's uh, crazy. I mean, it goes Corey Taylor, Queen, Deftones, Devil Driver, which is like, this, like which one doesn't fit? Devil Driver. I mean, we, we don't fit on, those, on, that, on that chart. But for some reason, everybody is coming, coming to the Devil Driver territory, and, and I'm glad to have them. Oh, yeah. Definitely, absolutely. I love that song. Uh, I love the cover art of this new record. It's fantastic. The Green Reaper, the Demons. You know, my question is, why did you choose the name Dealing with Demons as the title of this new studio album? Does it represent well, something personal to you? Absolutely. So... Here's the concept. You have talked to me before, and I, I rarely tell you what a song is about, because if a song got you through a hard time, and you think it's about a, a sunny day, okay. I don't want to tell you it's about a dark, I don't want to tell you it's about a dark, rainy day. It'll blow your whole vibe. But on this one, so uh, Dealing With Demons is very personal to me, and the record Dealing With Demons, first of all, let's go into the title. I'm dealing with my own demons, uh, and I'm dealing with society's demons. So okay. I'll give you some examples. Uh, Keep Away From Me was the first song we released. That's dealing with my social distancing my whole life, my agoraphobia, how I have a hard time being in a room with more than 10 or 15 people. I don't really like being in crowds of people that I don't know. Okay. Nest of Vipers, which we, Nest of Vipers, which we released, is about loyalty and how it can be bought and sold with money and personal relationships and business, how we should stay away from those types of people. Uh, wishing. Is about wishing someone was back in your life, wishing someone that has died or gone away is back in your life, wishing you had said the right thing to people. Um, uh, vengeance is clear, is very Italian, in the fact that people tell you to, you know, 
uh, maybe forget about that. Uh, forget about what somebody did. Uh, you know, let the water run off your back. Just forget about things. And I'm like, no, I have revenge in my heart. And I'll wait 5, 10, 20 years to get it. But that's very Italian. So, wow. uh, and so the dealing with demons mm-hmm. is dealing with my own demons, dealing with what I think society's demons are. So society's demons. We released a song called Iona. Iona is about why do we, why do we uh, worship this like murder porn TV? Why do we run home to watch CSI TV and what the next murder is? Why, when I ask you, and this is very uh, timely because it's Halloween, why do I say, what's your favorite movie? You tell me Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Halloween with Michael Myers. I said, well, they're using knives. They're killing 12, 15 women, skinning women, okay. putting them on books. You know, can you watch an animal suffer on YouTube? No, you can't. And so why would you go watch these kinds of movies? So these are, are things that need to happen in society, dialogues that need to happen. So dealing with demons is my own demons and then society. And then the artwork is exactly that. So you see the reaper. You see he's holding the devil driver lantern with the devil driver cross. The only light coming from anywhere is from the devil driver lantern. And the demons are trying to climb up all around him. And this is me saying that the light in my life Besides my family, obviously, that that enlightens my life is music, and of is course. is coming from Devil Driver, and and that light will shine a light on all the demons below me, below the Reaper, and light those demons so I can see them and I can deal with them one at a time. So that's that's why that's all of that in a nutshell. Okay, I understand. A fantastic explanation. I understand everything clear. I yeah, w- I would like to ask you something. If you could change sure. anything about the music industry, what would it be? Well, I've been in the music industry almost 28 years. I know. It's a very it's a it's a very difficult industry to be in. Yes. But if you're very private like me, it's easier to be in an industry like that. Uh, <laughs> during these times now, I'm watching my industry crumble. I'm watching promoters, crews, the coat check girl, the bartender at the local place, uh, the drum tech, the bus driver, the bus company, everybody's crumbling. So it's a very difficult time, not only for my industry, but obviously the world in general with what we're going through. Here's the positive thing. Okay. I watched in March and I watched in March and April almost every band come out and say that they were going to postpone their records. And that angered me so much that I called my label and I said, you are not postponing me. The great thing is, I have really great partners. They said, absolutely not, Des. Let's put the record out. Now, putting a record out in the middle of what we're all going through is going to see less monetary income. That's for sure. Okay. So we will take, we will take a monetary hit, but don't you want to be the person who gives art, who gives music, who gives a, pers- a piece of themselves during this time to people? Yes, I do. So do I, do, I, do I care about the monetary aspect at this point? No. What do I care about? I want to give people music in the time when they need it the most. This is why we release Dealing with Demons now. And this is why, even if this pandemic uh, goes into next year, we will release another record, Dealing with Demons Volume 2. Yes, which, yes. by the way, my man. Yes, which, I hear about that. Way, Paisan, I hear about yeah, that, 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 that. The number two. Yes, and let me tell you, brother. Tell me that that record, that record is my baby. No that way, is my favorite record. Why? That record is my favorite. Like I wanted that record to come out first, but since we had "Keep Away from Me" was so personal to me that I'm actually telling people, look at the job that I've done traveling the world for 28 years. Oh my God, and, amazing! And look at me, and, and 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 look at me. I suffer from agoraphobia and social distancing, and. So I'm telling something very personal, and that's why we released Volume One. But when Volume Two comes out, I think you're going to get something very, very special. And even if the pandemic, even if this continues mm-hmm. next year, we will, we will release music for Fantastic. the people in five, five years, ten years. Mm-hmm. You will look back and say, you will look back and say, Devil Driver is one of the only bands that released a record during this time. I mean, there's other bands, but we're we're in good company with the bands that have done it. You know, I mean, I told Randy from Lamb of God last night, I said, I'm very proud, man, you guys released a record during this time. I said, you didn't pull your record like wow. a lot of other bands. And so, I'm proud that we released now, you know? I know. Fantastic. 
Des, if you could advise a young musician who wants to start a music career, which would be your advice? Stay with your heart. Do what you love. Get a great attorney. Wow. Don't, don't, don't let drugs and alcohol uh -huh. uh, ruin, the situa ruin the situation. Don't let Yoko Ono come in and break up your band. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, um, and, and you know, man, listen, follow your heart. Follow your heart. Be true to your, to your art and your nature. You know, maybe, maybe you're a underground punk rock band, and you know that maybe that's not going to make you a million dollars, but you love punk rock. Then go do punk rock. And if you do it right, you do it organically. You do it from the heart. People will come, they will take to you, and they will love your band, and you may make a million dollars. But if you put money first before art, you will fail. If you put art first, then the money will come. So this is what I've done my whole career. Mm -hmm. Cold Chamber to Devil Driver, yeah, from, from Cold Chamber to Devil Driver, I put this first. I put my art first. Um, some people, you know, I just had an interview uh, an hour ago. I've, actually, I've been doing interviews all day. And a guy asked me, you know, when you left Cold Chamber, you were at the height of your career, gold records, and you were actually, I was actually on a tour bus, on my own tour bus, on the way to do a tour with Kid Rock. And he said, why did you leave? Why, why did you pull the bus over and leave? Mm -hmm. Before you started the tour, I said, because the art had gone wrong. I wasn't being true to myself. I didn't want to be a pop guy. It was getting too big. And I left. And then he said to me, well, most people wouldn't have done that. I said, exactly. I'm not most people. So follow your heart. Do your art from your heart. Wow. I respect you a lot, Dev. I respect, respect you. Respect brother. Oh, amazing. Any last word for the listeners of Rockum? Yeah, but look, look, first of all, thank you for everybody who's ever supported me, either in the past or now. If you're a brand new listener, pick up Devil Driver. You're going to get something unique and something different. If you've followed my career for a while now, I think you need to pick up this record and hear where it's going. It's very relevant. It's very timely. And I think I've surrounded myself with some of the best players in music. And I'm very proud of what the band delivered. Uh, and then, obviously, I had great art to work with. So, look, we hope to see you soon. We hope to be traveling. Stay safe. Keep your head up. Be with your family. Take the best times out of these bad situations. Keep your head positive. Always remain glass half full. And just be, uh, just try to be in life positive through all of this. Excellent. Uh, Des, I am a fan of your bands since your beginning in the 90s. I'm 47 years old and I'm from Peru and you know, a lot of people love you in Peru. Uh -huh. I live in Canada. Yeah, man, I, I born in Peru and the people love in Peru your, your music, especially Loco because you want it in Spanish. Loco! <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, listen, um, when, when we first came out, when Cold Chamber first came out, uh, large uh, Spanish following, of course. And the song Loco was dedicated to that following. So I love Peru. What a beautiful country. Uh, what great shows. And the food, oh my God, forget about it. So, you know, and let, let's not mention like when my, when my band and my crew and some of the single guys uh, hit the ground running. I mean, you know, beautiful women, beautiful culture. Everything is beautiful about Peru. And I can't wait to travel over the Andes and dip down into Peru and play another show. I can't wait till this all gets past us. And just uh, great to talk to you today, my man. And thank you so much for the beautiful energy.